Hey, this is Garrett Fry from the VFX Horde, and I am taking a look at Emma's work. So what I'm going to be doing just a little bit differently, I'm going to take Emma's work here, and I'm going to break it down, and I'm actually going to work a little bit on her DMP here just to kind of show some, uh, like, realizing some of the notes that I'm talking about. So this isn't something that normally would happen in a daily session, but I just want to show you um, uh, how to identify and how to fix some of these these issues. So um, as we can see that if you've been following along, Emma has light in the sky, better shadows, fix the concrete, more interesting ground element, and uh, there's a tracking issue, which we'll talk about in a little bit. So um, here is the um, here is the shot right here. So this is before and after. Um, you know, when I was looking at this, sometimes these plates can be very um, deceiving. And so uh, when I was initially looking at this, I it looks like it's floating here on the right hand side. If you can see how low it is here. And then you can see it up here, and it feels like it's kind of floating off the off the ground there. Well, the reason I've you know after studying the plate, and it's always a good idea to study your plate, it, that when you look at this, these this point right here, it's very it's a bit tricky to tell, but this point right here is actually higher than this ground level. So if we were to go out here, this would probably be maybe a foot or something higher. Um, on uh, on the left side here than it is on the right side. So the ground does slope right here. And so what Emma's been doing uh, for this is she's been correcting for that. So uh, if we take a look here, you can see that, yes, it does feel a bit higher here on the right-hand side, which I think is correct. So um, from last time, we talked about dropping the horizon line a little bit, and I think that does help. It looks, uh, it looks uh, a lot better over here, and I can see that, that in relationship here, we should probably, like I said, not be matching to the plate here or making it feel right here um, because, uh, because it drops slightly on the right-hand side. So the good things that I think Emma has been doing here has been putting in uh, these painted lines, which is great. Has an interesting shadow shape here in the foreground, which I think is great. Um, there are some little things, but one trick that uh, I wanted to show is uh, taking the original plate and uh, cutting out a little hole out of that original plate here, okay? And so um, I'm going to be checking here. I'm going to be checking the colors on the plate, and I'm going to be comparing it to the plate uh, or to the DMP that Emma has been doing here. So if I make myself a little box here, and uh, basically I've just made a mask in Photoshop. I'm masking out the whole plate, and I've uh, uh, detached the mask from the image. So now I can move it around. And one thing that you can tell here is uh, just looking at the black levels. So here I have this little box. You can see that the black levels here are much darker than they are here in, uh, in the plate down in the back here. Um, this, uh, this plate does not have a lot of atmospheric perspective. You can see just a little bit of the bluing. It, it's kind of getting a bit more blue there than here. Um, but really, there's not a lot of atmospheric perspective. And I think that the over-atmospheric perspective here um, is throwing off the shot just a little bit. So let's uh, see how we could fix that and improve on that area. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create an adjustment layer here. And uh, in this adjustment layer, I am going to... Um, uh, of course, I'm going to make a, a little bit of a mask here. So you can see my mask. I'm just going to fill it out here in the back. I'm going to kind of get these little areas here, the additions. Okay. I can always come back and revisit that mask, but... 
Uh, I'm just making a quick mask, and uh, then I'm going to do my color correction here. So, um, all right. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pull right in from the bottom because I want to match some of those black values. So here's our plate again. I'm going to put it over here. Okay. So these are the black values I'm trying to match here. And this is uh, my color adjustment. So I don't want to hit it. I don't want to hit it too hard here. Okay. So uh, that's better in the, in the darks. So it's a bit darker. Um, now probably what I want to do, like in the plate here, it looks a lot more green and less blue. What Emma, Emma, what you have here seems a little bit blue. And so I'm going to go over here to the blue. I'm going to suck out some of that blue, OK? And it's going to make it just a little bit red, a little bit too red for me. And then I'm going to suck out some of that red. So really, if you look at that color curve, it's sucking out the blue from the top end, the red from the top end, and the value from the bottom end. And maybe that just makes it just, let me see, just take a titch of the green out. OK. So right there. So now I can go back and just do a little bit of better job on my color grade here. I'm going to turn that off. So now I'm going to turn this on and off to show you the difference. I can probably lift it right here. Okay. So it's that difference right there. So I'm turning that on and off. Let me just kind of zoom in here. So you can see that difference, turning that on and off. And that much better, that, that matches those, uh, those values a lot, a lot better. So um, yeah, so that uh, restoring some of those dark values, I think, um, I think is going gonna, is gonna to help quite a bit with that those there. And then I want to point out just a couple of things, um, a couple of uh, little DMP fixes um, that we could do here. Um, one of which is uh, you have a, just a bit of cleanup that needs to be done um, when, we're, when we're looking at the original. And I know that part of this is the slipping of the plate. Um, which you know we'll talk about in just a minute, but you have a uh, the mask here. Um, let me just put that to red here. So the mask here. Um, this mask on the top edge is going to have to get. You can see how it's getting cut out right there of the plate. I know that's your sky trying to make sense of that uh, of, of that camera move and um, uh, don't worry about that right now I'll get you a new camera and it'll fix that issue but just make sure you have a nice clean image there uh, something that you could do is uh, actually not make a roto shape or um, uh, you could pull a key if you have an issue with the movie with a camera slipping or something but if it's a nodal thing you should be able to slap that right on on top and it should match up exactly if it works in Photoshop it'll work in the DMP if your camera is correct so your camera is not correct that's why it does it looks that way um, there's this area here you can see that there's this uh, this shadow here it used to be part of this mound over here but now it's just kind of blocking that thing right there uh, it, it kind of doesn't have a purpose or a reason so that can be cleaned up um, there's, uh, just a little bit of, um, like probably this shadow right here is a little bit too thick. If you compare it to some of the other things where, uh, we don't really see, um, these guys are y your new ones that you've added. But if you look at this guy here in the foreground, there's not really that much of a contact shadow there. Um, and if there is, then it's going to be underneath, um, you know, these little holes right here. 
So I think you don't have to have that contact shadow there. It could meet on the ground, um, and I think that would integrate just a bit better. Um, there's this kind of dark shadow line right here that I think you could uh, get rid of. Um, and then... Um, and then it, uh, it appears as if um, there's just a little bit of, uh, just a little bit of mushiness um, in here in some of these areas. So if you look out here, um, the, the kind of ambient quality of these shipping containers, like that's like the brightest bright in these shadow areas and this is the darkest dark and there's a bunch of values in between when we get to some of these areas here it gets a bit mushy so this is nice right here but if you compare this to some of these guys over here then uh, the the value um, range isn't is not quite there so i would try to restore some of that value range so getting some, get it restored, and, and I'm not talking about putting it back in, I'm talking about restoring what was already in the photo. So uh, getting some of the lights and the darks so that it matches more of this quality here, uh, more of what you have in here, which is in the plate. So it's matching that. Also, uh, something that you can do uh, is grab, so I'm going to just make a little marquee selection here for, uh, let's say I'm gonna grab this guy, and I'm actually gonna copy him right off, and I'm gonna move this little patch over here, and I'm gonna see how I'm doing on my values, because that right there, there's a couple different variations of this gray um, shipping container, but what we're gonna do is, uh, we're gonna use that as kind of a color swatch, and that's gonna tell us if we've got the right values. So you can see that's the lightest light and that's the darkest dark and it looks like you have a dark right there in the lines but you're missing some of these light areas probably. Um, maybe a logo or something. Uh, but also um, we don't see it on this side because this is the end side. But uh, we would see maybe some of the, uh, what do you call it, the fluting of these shipping containers, the, the corrugation of the metal um, and so we would probably see some light and darks in there. So that's the little swatch. As far as color-wise, it looks like maybe uh, definitely, like up in here, the color feels good, but then you move down here, and let's see if it's just my color correction. Uh, it's My color correction makes it better, but you can see the value of these and the value of this. This is kind of green compared to the redness of the things that are down here. So I would make sure that you have the same color. And I would do that with everything. So I would grab a little swatch of the red, move the red over here and test it against your red all the way going back. And I would test it against uh, the blue and this and, and just make sure that you have a consistency of color and of value all throughout your shot. And then if you were like, hey, I need to do a little bit of atmospheric perspective like we talked about, there's not really atmospheric perspective in here, just a barely, just a barely, a little bit. Um, and that would maybe be for these guys down here. But like for this stuff here, it really should just kind of match the stuff on the plate. So, um, yeah. So that's, uh, that's kind of how to treat these guys. These guys are feeling better. Um, but still, you can see, uh, you can see some areas like in here it's turning to a pretty solid color, uh, and it would be nice to see some of this variation that I see in here. So in here, I can see the, the little bit of the shadowing of the, the, um, of the corrugation of this metal, uh, but then I get down here, and yes, it is getting smaller and stuff like that, but uh, it would be nice to see some kind of indication of that um, so that it doesn't just look like, um, like flat. Uh, and, and the way to do that is, is maybe not to be hitting it with shadows, but to hit some bright, um, like in this guy here, uh, which I think is done well, is, uh, is actually some of your replacement here. So is to, 
have just a little bit of kicks here and there on these guys, and that just gives the impression that it's not just a flat color. So like this one, this one is particularly uh, flat. You know, it can have these little dark lines or it can have little kicks of light on there. Um, also, uh, <clears throat> um, so what you can do uh, also in addition to the, the matching of these colors and getting these, uh, the corrugation of these working a bit better, I think um, one thing that you could do here, you can see uh, this painted line, and it's great that it's sitting there in the, in the plate because it gives you an example of what you should aim for. And these are nice because they're the right color for this, but you can see right here like all the things that go on with these painted lines. So there's some areas of the painted lines that are darker, some areas that are lighter, uh, some that are painted through, you know, and it's just, it's fading, and then you see some cracks underneath. Um, and so it would be nice to see that kind of stuff in here. Um, and, and maybe it's actually like cutting this out of the plate and using that as a photo element and pasting it into what you've got over here just so you can, uh, just so you can check or, or just add some complexity to it. And maybe you grab that, move it in the same place, uh, just kind of expose uh, it in some areas. And maybe just let me, uh, let's just kind of go over that really quickly. So I'm gonna grab just a little bit more than we need out here. Okay. We'll see if we can actually get this into the right perspective. Uh, So uh, I just grabbed there what was on the plate, and then um, I put it uh, right there in that spot. So um, if we look at the relative dif difference there, we have just a little bit of breakup. Well, the color is just a little bit lighter, and that's directly from the plate. So actually, this would be the correct color for this. But on here, you can, you can see um, that there is some... Uh, that this area here, the paint is thicker, and this is like fading up, and then there's a, just a little bit of cracks in there. Um, and so all of that adds some complexity to what you have here. So you can either, you know, try to paint that in a little bit or use what was on the plate and just copy and paste it and, and use that basically as an element. You know, you're taking it from a high-res area down here and then you're squeezing it down into this area. So you're going to have enough resolution. That's not going to be a problem. It's just going to give you some detail um, in there. So uh, adding that, I think, I think would help. Um, also, uh, I, I do think the shadow shapes of these guys are really nice. I think that's kind of that's cool. I think what is missing, and uh, we talked about it before, it's just a little bit of that tooth on the ground so you can see it here these like this little line and then the dark shape and then these little just the the tooth uh, of the ground and it looks like we're missing it we have it just a little bit but you have to be careful because it looks a little bit like there's a soft split um, here like this is one image down here and it's being soft split into something else um, I think what would help is if you uh, if, if you had something similar to this. And actually, let's say we did have that. So let's just, um, let's just grab that. And um, I'm going to uh,
Okay, so I have that on a separate layer, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this piece of ground over here that's actually in the plate. Okay, and uh, I'm going to not reveal that. And because we have our slope, these don't match, right? So, but if we, uh, if we took our plate here and stretched it out so that it was working in the right perspective, okay, then um, now let's see if we can tweak this just a little bit so that it's working with your, uh, your line down here. Something like that. Okay, so now I've just kind of, you know, mashed it a little bit and put it so that it works a little more with your line there. Um, and uh, maybe we grab this and push it over there. Turn off some of our corrections here. And so uh, we have this ground piece. And uh, let's see if I can. I can just um, I'm gonna just pull a key here really quickly just so I can get like a little uh, little shadow on my um, shadow on my piece. I'm just going to contrast these up here. So uh, this is my addition right here, and then I'm just going to add uh, an adjustment layer. Let me invert that. All right. So just to give you an idea, um, of uh, what it would be like to have something underneath um, the shadows that you have there. And so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take out some of the red and the green here. Okay, so, uh, you know, that's just me quickly going in there and adding in some ground uh, detail in that area, and it just adds a lot. You know, you have these really nice complex shadow shapes, which is awesome. It would be nice to have something underneath that stuff to make it feel like it's complex. Um, and anywhere, like I said in previous videos, anywhere where I'm seeing... Um, big areas of, of solid color. This is a big area of solid color. This is a big area of solid color. This was a big area of solid color. Now I've put something underneath it. So it's those kinds of areas that, uh, you know, that really frighten me as a, as a digital map painter uh, because it's very, very hard to sell and to make believable. But if you have interesting tidbits, it will sell it quite a bit. So, um, yeah. So one last thing that I would uh, like to try to do here, and let me just uh, let me just check this out here. Okay. So it looks like uh, it looks like your um, uh, potentially your sky here is just uh, a bit too uh, green. 
So I'm going to take that and I am going to uh, take the green out of this. There we go. So I'm just pulling off from the top there and you can take the green out of that. So that that actually like when you turn that on and off, you can really see, I think, the difference of this green. Um, turn it, that it's, it's just really green. The sky that you've added in there is pretty green. So this kind of neutralizes um, uh, the shot quite a bit more, and then we can compare it to the original. And if we wanted to do our, um, you know, our thing again, um, our little box, then we could move this around and just check, um, check, check our work here. So um, it looks like that's really quite blue. So if I were to take, take down the blue here, let's move this around. See if we're about on target here. One thing about your sky is that it's actually quite a bit brighter um, than what's in the plate here. So if you have that little swatch there, cool thing is, is that now you can kind of see it disappear, right? So right there, that edge, it's almost gone. Um, and uh, that's going to, you know, give you an indication that the uh, that it, it's nice and it's uh, it's been... Um, the the color correction is really hitting hitting on so um, so yeah so you can grab that move it around you can say okay am I and and actually I'm I'm looking at that and it feels uh, it feels a bit it feels a lot better uh, to me actually um, I would maybe create just a um, just maybe another color correction. Um, where I'm, uh, just going to put in a gradient, uh, where I'm going to take a little bit out of the blue here, but I want it to just be on this side. So I'm going to do just a bit of a gradient. Um, so it does it just right there. Okay, so that was the sky before. This is the sky after. Before, after. Okay. So, um, you know, on, so we've talked about a bunch of different things. Um, the little paint fixes that needs to be done, I would go in there in real detail. Just make sure that all of your edges are looking nice. And uh, up here, you can see that there's some really sharp edges. You're going to fix those edges, of course, um, you know, uh, going through and adding detail in here um, that matches the same kind of value range that you have in the shadows and putting little kicks and shadows in here so that those don't turn into just solid pieces of color. You know, you don't have to do that everywhere, just in some places, adding complexity down here and then with all and then adjusting the sky. So with all of those changes, um, let's just take a look and compare, uh, our work to, um, to what we had before. So I'm going to put this right here up at the top. Okay. And I'm going to, let's turn this guy off here. So that's where it was before. And this is where it is after. Okay. Before, after, let me just... Okay, before, after. So yeah, so you can kind of see the change uh, there. So what I'm going to do, uh, Emma, is I'm going to uh, just uh, I'm going to save out this image, and I'm gonna, and I'm going to post it on the forum for you, just to take a look at for reference. Um, because it, uh, I think it's good to put it in your Photoshop file and just take a look. I wouldn't, I wouldn't match the work that I've done. I would watch this video. I would 
try to get as close as you possibly can to what you're seeing here in this image. And then I would go back, uh, after you've made that attempt, I would grab this image that I'm gonna give you and then put it into your Photoshop file and see how far off you are. Uh, and it's very possible, because I've done these changes rather quickly, it's possible that the things that you've done actually looks better than what I've done. Um, and so uh, take this with a grain of salt, put it in your image, look at it, and then say, oh, actually, I can see this looks way better uh, what I've done than what Garrett's done because I've implemented it and I've taken time to finesse it. Uh, but, oh, I totally missed this area here, and I should, I should bring that more towards what Garrett has. So uh, just a couple of things to look at, and I think, uh, and that's always the change. That's the, always the thing that you have to check. You just do a before and after. Make sure that it's uh, that the changes that you're doing to your DMP actually make your work look better. Uh, because sometimes you will be working and working, and the work that you do uh, is is making your work worse, or it's not making it better. It's just making it look different. And so I think uh, the representation that we have here. I think, I think that this is making uh, like a good step forward. And so I think this is a good direction to go. So uh, that is the end of this critique for Emma. Um, I hope that everybody can learn a lot from this critique. Um, I'm going more in depth into Emma's uh, piece here. And, I, and I, it's nice to be able to see that and to see how far something can go and how nitpicky you know, some of these, uh, these notes can be uh, to bring this to a real photo reel level. And so, uh, Emma, once you get this to the next level, show it to us again, show it to me again in our next daily session, and then we will we'll do another round of critiques. And you're going to refine, and you're going to refine, and you're going to refine, and this thing is going to look uh, absolutely photo reel. And uh, that can be everybody's, everybody can do that. If they were watching these videos and paying attention and incorporating a lot of the techniques and the advice that I'm giving and uh, rolling that into their own work, it will definitely make your work better.